Today I wanted to share with you the history of a ship that was incredibly popular with cruise fans all around the world, the MS Tropical. The MS Tropical entered service for Carnival Cruise Line in 1982. Prior to this, Carnival only had three ships in their fleet. They were, in the order they were bought, the Mardi Gras, Carnival, and Festival. All three of these ships were old ocean liners that had been converted to become cruise ships. Tropical was different from these three, however. She was the first purpose-built cruise ship for the Carnival Cruise Line. Her design was beautiful, and it still holds up to this day. The most notable part of it being the winged funnel, which has become a staple on Carnival cruise ships ever since. Tropical was an interesting ship, as she didn't actually have a sister ship. Now, there were plans back in the late 80s to heavily remodel the festival and turn her into a weird hybrid sister ship thing, but this never happened. Looking at images of the project, it looks as though it would have been too expensive for a ship that was on her last legs. Keep in mind, Carnival was not the giant cruise corporation they are today. Anyways, despite her being the only ship in her class, Tropical remained incredibly popular with passengers and crew alike. One reason for this might have been her interiors. She had everything that you would expect. Bars, a casino, restaurants, and of course a pool. Strangely, interior pictures are very difficult to come by, but the same can't be said for video. YouTuber Pants Adventures recorded parts of his cruise on board the ship, and it really gives us a look at what the ship was like in her heyday. Now, I can't show you the full video, because I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long, but if you do want to watch it, I'll link the video in the description. It is definitely worth a watch. In 2001, Tropical was intended to be transferred to Cape Canaveral-based cruise line, Cape Canaveral Cruise Line. Instead, however, she would go to Costa Cruise Line. Throughout 2001 and 2002, she was remodeled and refitted. One thing that was changed during her remodeling was her funnel, as the iconic wings were removed. Once all of these changes were made, she set sail for Costa as Costa Tropical, and she remained just as popular. Costa Cruise Lines, however, wanted to move into a different direction and that direction included much larger and newer ships. So, with that, Costa Tropical was transferred to P&O Australia. She went under an expansive refit again throughout 2005, and once that was done, she emerged as the beautiful Pacific Star. In my opinion, this is where the ship was most beautiful. P&O Australia's color scheme they had at the time just looks amazing. The ship still looked brand new, but she wasn't brand new. She was over 20 years old by the time she was acquired by P&O Australia. While she was still very popular with passengers, her age and size were becoming an issue. So in 2009, Pacific Star was transferred for the fourth time in her career to Pulmonta Cruise Lines, where she was renamed for the final time to Ocean Dream. If you know how the cruise business works, you can tell that the ship was approaching the end of her career. She sailed with Pulmonta up until 2012, when she was transferred to the organization Peace Boat. At this point, she wasn't maintained as well as she once was. She was an old ship, selling for a relatively small company, so when COVID-19 hit in 2020, Ocean Dream was as good as finished. Peace Boat was going to keep her around, however, they ended up getting a newer ship, so they had to sell the ship, Ocean Dream, former Tropical, for scrap. In early 2021, the ship was beached in Alang, India. She was 38 years old, which is all things considered an above average life for a cruise ship, in fact, she actually sailed longer than some other Carnival cruise ships, like Jubilee and Fantasy. In the end, however, she was just too small and too old to keep sailing. COVID-19 was definitely the nail in the coffin for this incredibly influential ship. Had it not been for COVID, I feel she might have sailed for a little bit longer before meeting the same fate a few years from now. There's no doubt how big of an impact Carnival Tropical had on the Carnival Cruise Line. Sadly, I never got the chance to sail on her, but I want to know if any of you did. Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, The History of the RMS Lusitania. See you guys next time. Peace out.